All right, well, we just turned over the top of the hour, so let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. My name is Angela Andrew, and welcome to the Mylio Photos Coffee Break. Today, we're going to be talking about how to customize some of your settings in Mylio Photos. And specifically, what I want to go through today are some of the settings that I found that made my experience in the application a little bit better. We're not going to talk about every you know, single one in the more menu and the settings menu, but I'm going to point out some of the ones that I think might make a big difference in your workflow. And you guys can let me know what you think. So let's go ahead. I'm going to jump into sharing my screen. And let me get some Zoom windows out of the way here. There we go. So you've got me right now in my Mylio photos. This is my library and some pictures that I took a couple of weeks ago on a trip. And let's go ahead and start by going up to the more menu in the upper right corner. And that's where we're gonna find our main Mylio photo settings. So we go ahead and click on that. There's several different categories in here and I'm gonna go through a few of these one by one. If you go into your account settings, this is where you can go in and manage your account. That's gonna launch a web browser. So you can go in and you can add and remove devices manually. You can update your payment information, things like that. If you've granted access to social media accounts to download pictures, you can go ahead and clear out that access if you want to. And if you really like having those blue pop-up boxes that give you tutorials, this is where you can go and reset those and have them show up again. So if you want those reminders of those little things, those little tips as you go through the app, you can reset those there. I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this. And let's jump into some of the more fun stuff. So the first place that I wanna go here is device appearance. If you are not a native English speaker, Mylio Photos, when you first install it, launches in English. This is where you wanna go to change the language. So we have several different languages available and you can just choose the one that you want, restart the app, and then it will show displayed in your language. So that's really useful if you wanna use something else. We also have a few others here that I really like. The two here that are my favorites are turning off use preview animation and turning on use sticky zoom. So this is the way that I like to have those set. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off right now and show you what I mean, what those do. So I'm gonna actually just X out of here, out of my settings. And I've got a picture here that is up on the screen and I have several that are similar. So if you go between those images, you see that little animation that flicks it between each image? I find that annoying. I don't know about you, you might love it, but that is that preview animation. The other thing is if you zoom in on something, let's say you're going through a series of images and you wanna find the one that's the most sharp. Well, you wanna just arrow through those. Sticky zoom keeps that zoom level so you don't have to keep zooming in. So let's go back up to our settings and turn that back on. So into device appearance, we're gonna turn off that preview animation and turn on sticky zoom. So let me X out of that, go back to this first image here, and we can see here's the photo. I'm gonna zoom in, and now if I arrow between the images, I'm keeping that zoom level, and I'm not getting that annoying animation between the pictures, so it makes it much easier to compare images side by side. And this is helpful for when you're in quick review mode as well, and I just find this gives me a much better experience. It's completely up to you whether you wanna leave those settings the way they are by default, or you want to change them the way I did. Um, but I've just found that that makes my experience so much more enjoyable. And they're tiny little things, but those are here under device appearance. So I recommend turning off use preview, preview animation and turning on sticky zoom. Now there's a few other things in here that you might want to take a look at. Showing file name extensions, that's going to be over here under file name. You want to see the type of files listed here. If you turn that off, it's just going to have the file name. It's not going to have that CR3 extension. I like to leave that on. And the rest of these, you can take a look through. They're not as critical, in my opinion, to um, what my experience, but you can certainly look through those. So let's go ahead and go back and jump down to the life calendar. So if you are located not in the Northern Hemisphere, so Mylio Photos, our company is based out of Bellevue, Washington. And so we're in the Northern Hemisphere and we have our seasons set to Northern Hemisphere seasons. If you are in a different part of the world or you wanna adjust the dates, the different seasons fall for where you live, you can go in here and customize that. So that's pretty cool. And then we also have linked calendars. So if you want to have your calendars automatically populate with events from your 
Google Calendar, your Outlook Calendar, and so forth, you can have Mylio directly connect to those and it's going to create events based on what's in your actual calendar. So those are kind of fun. I will say that it does bring in typically everything and you might not want that. And it is a bit of a pain to clean up. So think about this before you do it. Um, I do not have this enabled on mine, but it is an option if you want to do that. Um, another one here is the event setting. So once you do start creating events, whether that's with a linked calendar or doing them manually, you can decide how you want those events to show on your calendar. So let me go ahead and back out of this here for a moment. And I'm going to jump to my live calendar. And you can see each of these dots is an event that I've created. So if I go back up here to my settings and into live calendar, I can choose how many event bars to display on any given view. So each one of these boxes, whether I'm looking at an individual year, a month, or a day, you can decide how many of those you want to show. And for me, I think two is kind of a nice balance where you can still see those events, but it's not totally cluttering up your calendar. So if you feel like you have too much going on there, or maybe you want to see more, you can drag that up. And then you can also choose how events appear in the decade view, year view, and month view. So if, an, if a decade view has, let's see here, if an event is longer than 10 years, it's going to hide it. In the year view, if an event is longer than 24 months, it's going to hide it. So you can adjust these to your taste. All right, let's go ahead and back out and go to the next section, which is general. And there's quite a few in here that you can go through and take a look at for your own system. But a few of my favorites here, the first one is enable single image review gestures. And I do believe this is on by default. And this is when you're using a touchscreen device, you can swipe up and down to do your flags, swipe, I think, yeah. I think up and down is do flags, left and right is to do star ratings. And if you don't like having that functionality, some people find it distracting or maybe they accidentally add ratings to their images when they're not wanting to, you can go in here and turn this off. I like to have it on, that's completely up to you. Another one that I'd like to encourage you to enable is if you use Microsoft Office documents, so we're talking like, .doc, .xls, those types of documents created by Microsoft Office, app, Office applications, you can actually add a folder of images that contain those files and have Mylio Photos view and sync them, which is pretty cool. So if you want to have that functionality, you can go ahead and toggle that on. And that's very, very helpful. Um, another one that I like, and this should be on by default as well, is when you insert a camera memory card into your computer, it immediately pops up with a dialogue and says, hey, do you want to import what's on this card? I like that functionality, but if that annoys you, you can turn it off and then go into the add media button up here and do that manually. Totally up to you. Uh, the next one down here is the last media added view. And this one is when you go through and you import new photos. So let's get, say you enter into that SD card, you bring in a new shoot. What my Leo is going to do is once it finishes importing those images, it's going to pop up and show you that most recent import. If you like that, go ahead and leave it on. If you prefer to have Mylio stay where you were before, you can go ahead and switch that off and it won't jump to that last media added view. All right, finally in this section, we have our web maps provider. And this is when you're using Photo Explorer. So if you've ever noticed that you have a little badge on the top right corner of pictures that have GPS information, it lets you open that up in a web browser. And you can choose which web browser that goes to um, or which map provider that uses. So what happens the first time you launch that, you choose a map provider. If later on you decide you want to use a different map provider, this is where you can change that. And we support Apple Maps, Bing Maps, Google Earth, Google Maps, and OpenStreetMap. Um, personally, I found that as far as using Photo Explorer and getting the most information about my pictures, Google Maps is probably the best one. When I travel and, and need directions, I prefer Apple Maps, but using Google Maps with Mylio for me has given me the best experience. So play around with those, see which one you like best, and you can always change it later on if you decide you want to do something else. All right, so let's go down now to organization. I'm going to jump over sync. Um, we'll just mention it very quickly. If you ever need to turn off sync, you can turn it off here. You can turn off cloud syncing. And you can show or hide the sync panel, which is this tab over here on the right. 
Um, those are just good to know about, but you probably won't need to mess with those very often. So let's jump down to organization. These are a couple more fun ones. And we're gonna start here with categories. So categories let you add broad descriptions to your photos. And very, very soon, these are gonna get much more important in my Leo photos. So if you haven't started using them, I encourage you to explore categories. And we have several that come built into my Leo photos. The ones here that have an X, you can get rid of them. We have a handful here that are built in and are going to stay there, but most of them you can change and you can add up to 47 of your own custom categories. You can assign a specific color. You can drag or drop to change the priority of them. And they're very, very helpful. So some of the categories that I've created, like I've imported social media and I've added a category for just social media. Um, my husband is retired U.S. Navy for all of his reenlistments and deployments and homecomings and things like that. Anything that was Navy related, I've assigned the USN category. Um, I also have ones for anniversary, different photography workshops I've attended, birthdays and so forth. So you can customize these in whatever way you want. And this gives you a different way to browse and filter through your collection. Coming soon, we're going to have ways that this becomes very, very important. And you're actually gonna be able to show and hide pictures in your entire library using what we're gonna call spaces. They're gonna be like workspaces. And those are gonna be category driven. So you can have a family category and on a specific device, you only have family pictures there. And that's gonna be a great way if you also do pictures for work. You can categorize your work pictures and you can have a workspace just for your work photos. So you're not cluttered with everything else or you can see everything else and ignore your work stuff when you're on your personal time. So they're gonna be coming even more powerful. So I encourage you to get in there and play with these and see what they can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that for now. And let's take a look at photo prioritization. So this is one that a lot of people don't even know exists and it controls a ton of stuff of what happens inside of my Leo photos. The most visible one is it's going to decide what pictures are ranked and shown on your life calendar. So it's going to prioritize based on the way they're listed here. So event priority and cover photo for events, those are going to be locked in at the top, but the rest of these you can drag and drop. So I can say single dated, I can make that down below and say, I want all my five stars and flags to be the most important. So if a picture has a five star rating, or has been marked with a pick flag, those are the ones that are gonna be up at the top of the list and be the most likely to show here in my life calendar. So this allows you to go in and change that priority order depending on how you interact with your photos. So if you like to use color labels and you want everything with your blue color labels to be the most important to show most frequently, you can go ahead and move that to the top of the list and that's gonna change how Milio is prioritizing those photos. So that's a really good thing to know about. You don't necessarily have to mess with it, but if you ever wanted to, you have, you know, it's good to know that it's there. All right. So then that takes us down into advanced. And just a few things to point out here. Most of us love having facial recognition in Malia photos. It's a great way to organize and find pictures of the people who are most important to us. However, some people don't use it, don't want it to be on you can turn off face detection, okay? And then there's a few other settings here regarding face detection and using the people view that you can take a look at. We also have the same on-off option for smart tags. So our AI smart tags are amazing and they help you find things. They're object, so your the computer goes through, your, it's all done locally and it looks at your images and recognizes objects and other visual properties of your photos. And that generates words that you can search by and quickly find different pictures in Mylia photos. If you don't like that functionality and you don't wanna use it, you can turn it off. I do recommend keeping it on, but it is completely up to you. If you have this on, one thing that I really like is the show smart tag confidence scores. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna jump back here to my all photos and go down here to my smart tags. And you can see that not only do I have that smart tag word, but I also have a number right here next to it. And that shows how confident Mylio Photos is that this is the description for this. So it's 60% confident that it's a cloudy day. 
Um, it's, you know, about 63% confident that it's a hill, 72% confident that it's a mountain. And you can take a look and see what those scores are. And I just find that to be helpful and interesting. If that's just clutter for you, you can leave that off. It is off by default, but I like having that on. So that's up here under settings and under advanced. And again, we have optical character recognition in Mylio Photos, which lets Mylio read text in your images. If you like, you can turn that off. I think it's amazing, an amazing tool. So I keep that on. And then going down here to the IPTC info, this allows you to enter essentially a business card for your photos. It shows ownership. So if you're doing any kind of art photos, whether you're doing it professionally or personally, this lets you embed information about yourself into your picture so people know that it's yours. And it's just another layer of protection you can put in your copyright and so forth in ways people can contact you if they wanna commercially use your photos. So this, like I said, is off by default, but if you turn it on, what you're gonna end up with, let me go ahead and close out of that, is a section here, do, 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 where is it? IPTC, right here. And this allows you to enter all the stuff in here for individual images, or you can set up that IPTC card, which is in the menu that we were just in. So you have all that information pre-filled and you click this button and it will add that information to any photo or group of photos. So you can select an entire range of photos. So let's say select all in a folder and you can quickly add your ownership information to all of those pictures. I think it's a very, very helpful thing to have. And I, I love having that there. So let's go ahead and jump back over here into settings under advanced. So we have our IPTC info. And the last option we have down here at the bottom is enabling the Mylio Inbox OS integration. So what that does is it gives you an operating system level shortcut to the Mylio Photos Inbox. So let me just jump to that really quick. I'm gonna pull up a finder window here and I've got several open. Let me get rid of a couple of these. And you'll notice over here on the left, I have the Mylio Inbox. Mylio put this shortcut there for me. And if I click into that, that's got all of the pictures that currently reside in my Mylio inbox, which you can find in the folders view. And this is a really quick and easy way to drag and drop pictures into your Mylio photos library. So if I'm, you know, let's say I'm on my desktop and I wanna grab this picture here and I wanna drag that into my Mylio inbox, that's a quick and easy way to get things into Mylio. I do highly recommend it. It's a great option to have, but some people really don't like it. So we've given you the option to turn that off. So that's completely up to you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and X back out of those. Are there any questions? So we've gone over kind of my favorites and some of the things that I think are the most helpful. Is there anything else that you guys have questions on? Actually, there are a couple questions. Harold has two computers and he's got Mylio Photos Plus synced between the two. He's wondering if, if he needs to separately set the settings for each computer. It depends on the settings. Some of them are computer okay. specific. Some of them are global. So it just depends on which one. So for instance, if you're not seeing the IPTC on one of your devices, you might just need to go into settings and enable it on that device. And I think that allows you to keep things, you know, maybe you don't want to have to deal with that on your iPad, but you do want to have it available to you on your computer. Okay, great. And then George wanted to see if he could demonstrate the single image uh, review. Single image Does review. Sense? Which one was that? Um, oh, <clears throat> let me think here for a second. Let me grab my, my phone here. <laughs> let me share from my phone. I can do that here. So go back. Here, server. Let's see if this works. One moment. There we go. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Awesome, okay, so you guys are looking at my iPad and you can always go into quick review mode and this has its own set of gestures you can use. So if we go into quick review, that's its own thing. But the other gestures that are the ones that the, um, the single image review gestures, let's say I go in here to this photo here, I can drag up and down just on this on the picture itself, and I can add a rating. 
And I can also drag, I believe, I thought there was a left to right. Maybe it was, okay, it's on the left side of the screen is stars and on the right side of the screen is flags. That's what it is. Been a while since I've used that one. <laughs> so it's just a matter of where I'm touching on the screen. So for stars, I'm moving my finger up and down on the picture on the left side of the screen. And for the flags, I'm moving my, my finger up and down on the, pic, uh, the picture here on the right. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Go okay. ahead. Michael's asking, he didn't seem to have that option. So I'm asking uh, which option. Michael, you can unmute yourself if you want to. I'm trying to figure out which option you're asking about. Um, in the meantime, uh, studio. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oops. Go ahead, please. Oh, yeah. The uh, the last option under the IPTC, um, you clicked on something there. Okay, that was the Milo inbox. That. So under settings and advanced, if you scroll all the way down, you should have this option here to enable Milo inbox OS integration, and that's only going to show on a Windows or Mac computer. That's not going to be an option on um, any mobile devices. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Cool. And then Studio SLB is asking about the inbox. Is it just for adding random photos or would it be useful in an organized workflow? So the way I use it primarily, so there's, there's two different ways. If I'm on a computer and I use an external editor, one of the editors I like to use is Luminar Neo. But one of the things I don't like about that application is it doesn't automatically save it back to the folder where the original was located. So instead of having to hunt through my work through my file system to find the right folder, I just drop it into the Mylio inbox. And then it's much easier to reorganize once it's in Mylio. So let me show you what that looks like once it's in Mylio. So here's my inbox. And this is just kind of my to-do list of things to organize. So it's things that got dropped in here from random sources. Some of them are edited pictures. Some of them are things that were shared with me and I can just drop them into the inbox and then organize them later. Did that answer your question? And then the other, the other side of that is if you're on mobile, if you open up a picture in an external editor on a mobile device, or you, and so you wanna make some edits and send those edits back to Mylia, or let's say you wanna download a picture that somebody sent to you in WhatsApp or a text message, you want to send that to Mylio, those will automatically also get put into your inbox. All right. Yeah, I don't see any of the questions. Um, whoops. One. Oh, got it. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a link at the top of the chat, and this is to the Mylio manual, which Angela actually wrote. So there's more detailed information in the settings section. So if you want to after the webinar, check that out. You can just click on that link. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Lori. Sure. I think that's all the questions. All right. Well, pretty short and sweet coffee break for you guys today. I hope it was helpful. Um, not the, you know, funnest, most interesting sounding topic, but I think it's a pretty useful one. And I know some of those settings really made a difference in my experience with Mylia Photos, so I hope they do for you as well. With that, I want to wish you guys a wonderful rest of your week, and we will see you on the next coffee break. Bye, everyone.